call the May 8th Utilities Committee meeting to order. Mr. Shakespeare, can you please lead us in the invocation following the pledge? Dear Lord, we ask that you allow us to make good decisions in, in the utilities for this parish so we can move forward. We'd like to thank you, as always, for the great weather that we've been having and continue to have this great spring. We'd like to also ask you to take care of our seniors that are graduating and are leading us into the future. And as always, take care of our soldiers overseas. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Assembly, let the uh, record reflect Mr. Thompson is absent. Public comment period. Anyone wishing to speak on an agenda item, please sign in with the secretary. Uh, we ask that we uh, have two thirds. Chairman. Yes, I'd sir. Like to add two thirds. Uh, we have uh, emergency repair for Country Ridge. I'd like to put that on as two thirds. Second. Motion by Mr. Shakespeare, a second by Mr. Lambert. Any objection? Motion carries. I'd also like to uh, add as funding for Country Ridge uh, as a two thirds. We have a motion by Mr. Shakespeare. Second. Second by Mr. Savoy. Any objection? Motion carries. We'll take those up now. 3A Country Ridge uh, emergency, Mr. Bob Turner is going to handle that. I believe we have a pump or something out. Thank you Mary, very much, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you all well know, uh, we're holding Country Ridge together the best we can until we get it repaired. There's two pumps at the lift station that are uh, absolutely critical to the operation, proper operation of that lift station. Last Thursday late, uh, one of those pumps fried. It just, it's totally shot, and we've been scrambling to figure out what we can do, but we need to replace that pump. And so we asked and got a quote, and we just got it today, and I apologize for bringing it to you at such short notice, but it's so critical that it's an item that we need to address as fast as possible. But for uh, just uh, right at $8,000, we can pull that pump, yes, install a new comparable pump, and uh, maintain this lift station. Motion to uh, authorize uh, DPW to spend up to $8,000 to replace uh, pump at Country Ridge. Motion by Mr. Shakespeare. I'll second it, Mr. Second by Chairman. Mr. Lambert. Any discussion? Discussion. Mr. Lambert. Uh, Mr. Bob, I know, uh, I apologize, I know he just got on out here with the uh, sewer department. What's his Danny, name? Danny Laporte. Mr. Danny. Yes. We get these pumps in. Are we educating Country Ridge on uh, what, what's happening with these pumps out there? Uh, let me, if you don't mind, if you got a few minutes, I'd like Danny to come up and Please, speak to I'd that. Please, I'd appreciate that. Good evening, committee. Um, as far as educating the uh, uh, residents of residents, Country Ridge, correct. no, we have not. Uh, that was part of the pro the program with Mr. Sapia and uh, uh, Montgomery Watson when that program was to be started and we we're supposed to have the upgrades done to the lift station and the point repairs done to the system itself. That was part of his plan to introduce that to the public at that time. Uh, it would not be a bad idea to introduce it to all the public for that matter for their own benefit. Uh, I, I would just like to get I'd like to get a handle on this. Uh, we're coming back with these pump repairs time after time, and we, you know, it's something out there. I think I know what it is, but we need to get get it out to the public. Uh, yes, it is. It's uh, for the most part, it's it's a it's a buildup of grease and other debris that uh, some of the residents are putting in there. Uh, yeah. When we dismantled that pump at Country Ridge last week, uh, it was late in the evening, and. Uh, the gentleman that uh, did it for us was the same gentleman that worked on that pump three years ago for um, Delta Processing. I believe his name was Donald. And uh, he told me that there was uh, almost the identical things in this pump when he pulled it down as they were three years ago. So it's a repeat thing that people continuously do. 
It's uh, we're creatures of habit, unfortunately. Thank you, uh, Danny. Anything else? So, Mr. Poor, what you said is, in the when MWH does when we actually do the project is when the the education of the the he citizens has, in that particular area will be will happen. Yes. Okay. He he, ha he has the material. We'll just have to disseminate it to the people in that area. I would. Uh, I would I would endorse a door-to-door -door campaign going along and giving people brochures on it uh, to help reduce this this problem that's out there. Uh, we've had to replace a, a motor on the blower out there also on that plant. Uh, I've contacted Gulf State, excuse me, Entergy, and have a meeting with the electrical engineer out there next week about getting us three-phase power out there because uh, we're running uh, 10 horsepower pumps on single-phase power. And we're at the max on it. We're pulling the max 53 amps on it. Uh, gentlemen, those, those, those motors are not going to take that very long. The heat load is, is too great on them. Uh, I would recommend that, that we get three-phase power out there. However, energy may not uh, particularly like the idea because it's residential, and we would probably be, be the only people that would actually use that three-phase system. So uh, I'm just giving you a heads up on it about what's uh, possible in, possibly in store for us. But I am asking for a survey to be done for three-phase power there, as, as in all future plants that we should get for our own protection. Any further discussion? Uh, I, I do. Uh, Mr. Salvo. You said you are in communications with energy or you're trying to set it up? No, I have an appointment with them. The uh, engineer's name is Randy Lejeune. And I believe it's at 8.30 Monday morning. Okay. Why don't you forward that, the information that you get in, out of that meeting forward it to the chairman so sure. that he can be aware of what energy is having to say about that? I, I will if, if, you, okay. if you'd like me to. Yes, sir. I, I usually uh, uh, copy Mr. Bob on all my meetings and stuff that I take in, and I'll be happy to copy Mr. Berg also. We will, we will keep you informed as to what we find out regarding Great. that. Thank you. Any other discussion? Any opposition to the motion? Motion carries. 3B, Country Ridge funding. Um, originally, we, uh, we passed the, the project, I believe, uh, the committee and also the council to uh, do both phases of the project for Country Ridge. I believe the total came up to 550, Ms. Martha, 550,000. I believe Ms. Gwynn found approximately 250, anybody ever know the exact, Mr. Ryan? 275,000, I believe Ms. Martha, if you could possibly come up, you have a new source of funding. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. We have been awarded a grant through the Office of Community Development. This is the Louisiana Government Assistant Program We'd originally asked for $100,000 for the Country Ridge sewer construction, and we awarded $72,800. Now, we have just been uh, award given the award leather, but we have not gotten the contract signed yet, but we should have that done probably in the next, in a month. It's time coming for them and send it back. So we do have that amount of money to help maybe support some of the existing issues that we do. And uh, as um, Mr. Turner said, we are going to work with the um, Montgomery Watts on some type of community awareness because we understand that it doesn't do any good to repair it unless we have some type of education. So we will also work with uh, DPW in trying to put together a campaign for it. Okay? Okay. Thank Is that good news? That Thank is good all. news. So that brings us to three hundred forty-seven thousand eight hundred dollars. I'm still working on it. We need two hundred and two thousand more. Okay. Mr. Ryan, would you like to come up and say anything? You have any information? Anything? Find us two hundred more. <laughs> really, that the only comment I would make is, you know, we've obviously got enough to do the inflow infiltration right now, plus some extra. Uh, but that's still quite, we're still $200,000 short of building the new wet pump sump system. Uh, I, I, basically, I defer to Gwen on all the money deals, so I, 
I can't tell you where that, that extra money would come out right now. Unless it came out of, you know, unless there's some more that could come out of that sales tax fund, but I don't know if that can happen or not. Okay. Mr. Shakespeare? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ron, the, on the project there, I think you had said that it was two phases. Well, it, it should be in two phases, and it was originally bid in two phases. The inflow infiltration and how problem. How much is the first phase? 275. Okay, so we would have enough. To and that's the, the long phase. phase, too. That's going to be the toughest part of it. All right, but I mean, we could we could actually start the first phase immediately and we could, direct. We could uh, be out for bid on that within six weeks, I would think, and have okay, coming back. I, I, uh, just so, if you don't mind, I'm sorry for interrupt, but the administration has turned it into two phases. It was designed and ready to go as one project, and that's what we voted on, one project. Right. So let's not confuse it. It's not two phases. Right, that's, that's what the administration would like to do is separate it into phases. Right. This council voted for a project. Right. Okay, I just want when to make that correct. It's one project, and when it came back, the way I under, if I remember right, the bid came back with two possibilities. One was repairing the present deal, and the other one was actually pulling the, the uh, wet sump out and replacing it with something new, which needs to be done. Okay. Uh, well, I, I think it's something that's way over, way overdue, and uh, I move that we uh, we move the project with the existing monies, and we direct the administration to find uh, the remaining monies out of something that is budgeted that not will be that will not be completed this year, and we will replace that next year because that's basically uh, to update everyone. Uh, this project was funded or funded in the budget and we borrowed that money to go to a project that was ready to go at the time when this one wasn't ready and i think we should uh do the same thing and uh, uh and so i'd like to in within the motion is to take existing monies and direct administration to find a project that will not be completed this year that uh to redirect funds from that and put it on this project and move forward with it Motion by Mr. Shake Snyder. Do we have a second? I'm going to second that for discussion. Mr. Savoy. Ron, hang on a second. Okay. The phases that we, that administration has broke it into, if we go with the $275,000 first phase, how far is that going to get us? That will replace the pumps, although we'll replace, you replaced one of the pump motors tonight. That does not include three-phase power, but it includes all new collection lines, fixing all the spots that were found with the cameras, uh, including a lot of taps that are customers that are not paying right now. Uh, it basically replaces everything but the actual collection sump in the ground. Uh, which is half the problem. Which is half the problem. Which is half the problem. So we're all still dealing with half the problem. How, what's the time frame of mobilizing and construction of the first phase? How long is it going to take the contractor? We could probably be out for bid when it's, let's say, six weeks out for bid. But it should be under construction by certainly no later than late this summer. It should move pretty quickly, too. Because you got a right away that's not that hard to work in, basically digging up the present line, and you're replacing almost all of it. All right. At the last utilities meeting, we talked to administration about going back and looking at the budget to see if there's any projects that's out there that we uh, see now, if, after the first quarter is already passed, if there's some projects that's not going to get completed. Have we got any feedback from finance or administration? I have not yet, but I have seen, I've been copied with that, and I know that uh, Bob's been copied with that, and I've submitted mine. I think he's probably about finished with his. Certainly he's got more projects than I do, but uh, I know they're asking everybody for it. Now, whether that list is available yet, I do not know. I haven't asked that question. I'm just thinking that if by breaking it off into two phases, this is going to cost us more money versus the full project of a, we're only talking about a half a million dollar project. That's not that big of a project. Uh, we're only $200,000 short. I would 
it would have been nice if it had administration been able to give us some recommendations or some guide, uh, guidance on where we can go and get some money. Okay. Um, I'm not in favor of breaking it up into two phases, especially if it's going to be a gap between finishing the first phase and waiting to find monies and then get the contract or, or rebid it again. That's not the way we do business. All right. All right. Now, I understand the, the, the funding me mechanism. Um, and so far as administration finding a way, maybe uh, maybe administration doesn't want to find it. I mean, that, maybe it's up to us. Because we offered it to them last month. And it hasn't been taken care of. Ms. Martha. Ms. Martha. Yes, sir. There's one project out there that we budgeted five hundred thousand dollars for, and everybody scared. It seemed like everybody scared to bring it up. That's the Muddy Creek. We got five hundred thousand. We budgeted five hundred thousand dollars for Muddy Creek Bridge. Where are we with the working with the grant or wherever we're on that project? Do you have any idea? We there's no grant for Muddy Creek that I'm aware of. I think y'all had instructed. Um, Dr. Keller to be looking at something, but as far as I know, there is no grant identified for Muddy Creek. I'll be happy to check for it. Please check and be that. prepared to address the council at the next council meeting. The finance meeting, Thursday. Okay. Yes, there's a finance, finance meeting Thursday. Yes, Get with sir. Mr. Keller. Okay. And see what he's doing as far as working on Muddy Creek Bridge. All right. I'll and let's get an update to. on what it, does it look like in terms of getting that project up and running and off the ground this year. Because that is $500,000 sitting in the budget that we may not utilize this year. But to that, where we can move $202,000 okay. to fulfill the, the, the funding for this project and make a whole project. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, but that the five hundred thousand that you're alluding to is not a grant. Is I'm it saying funds that, that are already dedicated? That's that come from the one cent sales no. tax that we can move. Okay. Legally. All right. Yes. All right. So be prepared to bring us up to speed on where we're at on, on the grant plan. side. Yes. And you would like for me to get with finance also mm -hmm. on the yes. five hundred thousand? They already know about it. I think they're scared yeah. to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's fine. Well, it, I, I'm just I mean, you're asking me about 500000 and there's not Dr. a grant Keller, for that. Dr. Keller's out there trying to find another sum of money so that we can move Money Creek Bridge forward. Okay. If he's not, if he doesn't have any good luck or, or good news on that end, okay. then we can go possibly go and take some of that $202,000 out of that to put on this project to make a full project and then come next year, reallocate re for Money Creek. Okay, that's well, one. I'll okay. be there. Thursday night? Yes. Yes, sir. Any further discussion? Thank you, ma'am. Any opposition to the motion? Motion carried. Next, we have Stag Grant. Mr. Falcom Hall, Corps of Engineers. Look at Falcom. We thank the Chisholm Committee for this opportunity to present tonight. Uh, we will combine our presentations tonight on the STAG grant and on the comprehensive wastewater into one presentation, if that's all right with the Utility Committee. That'd be fine, Mr. Falcon. Uh, we feel that we've made significant progress. Uh, we're going to bring you up to date, kind of give you a little background on where we've been, um, tell you a little bit about the progress that we've made, and then identify a path forward. Uh, we, we feel that we're at the point now where uh, it's time to fully implement a wastewater, comprehensive wastewater treatment system for Ascension Parish. And uh, we're going to kind of lay that out in our presentation tonight. I have my team with me tonight that's going to do a, a lot of the late work. Uh, Daron Elsey, uh, project manager, and uh, Manish uh, from Hartman Engineers are going to be our presenters tonight. Duran is going to kind of present the background on what we've been and the status of uh, the work that we're doing. And then Manish is going to come with the business plan. We developed a business plan uh, that basically lay out uh, the future, lay out all the projects, 
uh, that need to be implemented into the future uh, with a proposed budget and everything. So we're going to basically uh, lay it all out to you tonight. Uh, we met with uh, President Hughes already. We met with uh, Mr. Turner already and gave them pre-briefings uh, on this information. Uh, we feel that they are certainly supportive of the, the path that we've identified. So we hope at the end of this presentation we also get your support. Uh, Duran, come on and present the first part of the presentation. Thank you. Wow. Just wait a minute while they'll pull up the uh, presentation. Basically, we're going to give you a little bit of background on how we, where we've come from and some of the authorities that we use to get to where we are today. Um, primarily, we've worked under the Corps of Engineers, is working with the parish under the 219 program, which was authorized under Order 92. Uh, basically, this is a program designed to provide assistance to non-federal interests or to local sponsors uh, to rehabilitate or to work to provide work on the water-related infrastructure and wastewater-related infrastructure. Um, the cost share for this is 75.25, um, and we are able to provide a, a wide variety of capability and assistance, uh, ranging from technical to planning to design and, and construction. A um, couple of items that we've completed to date via the 219 program. Um, we've completed the water and wastewater facilities plan. Basically, this plan. Uh, evaluated all of the existing plans that were completed for the parish um, and we, we combined all of those documents and we made one main report and this report has served as our path forward for the work that we've executed since uh, its implementation in 2000 and uh, early 2004 time frame. So we've combined all of those and this report ultimately recommended the Darrow and the Hillaryville wastewater treatment plants. Uh, from there, we went on to do some work at the Lamar Dixon Wastewater Treatment Plant and Site Study. We completed this uh, December of 03. And basically, this was to assess the feasibility of making the Lamar Dixon site uh, your regional wastewater treatment plant site. Uh, we ultimately identified an area just adjacent for that, and we'll talk about that in the uh, upcoming slides. Uh, the next item that we looked at was the corrective action master plan. Um, this focused in on two areas, uh, Bayou Francois and Serbio Canal. These two areas were previously uh, identified, uh, were previously subject of water quality sanctions. Uh, this report recommended a least cost, costly alternative. I think the uh, original turn alternative that was considered was doing wetland assimilation. Uh, the report actually identified um, an alternative that was least costly to that. And one of the other items that the Corps has facilitated was the negotiation of the Ascension Water uh, Franchise Agreement. This was became effective the first of this uh, calendar year and we completed ne negotiations at September of 06. This ultimately provides a new funding source for the parish. Um, this next slide, we actually have some good information, uh, some good news to report back on that. As it relates to the EID, we actually have approval from EPA uh, on the EID. Uh, the letter has been sent to the parish. Uh, the parish president has a copy of that letter. So basically, you're now able to expend the funds from the STAG grant. Um, and we have uh, some of the projects that were identified specifically in the STAG grant. Um, it was the Darrow Sanitary Sewer, Hillaryville, uh, the Ascension tie-in to Donaldsonville, and the water distributions. Basically, the core's role in this, we've, uh, the, as I appreciated, this was started late 90s. Uh, we came involved and facilitated some of the um, conversations between the parish and MPA, and we ultimately have a FONSI so that we can all go forward and, and expend those funds uh, within the parish. The total cost within the EID is estimated right now at about 2.1 million and the parish will basically be getting reimbursements on Darrow and Hillary Reveal uh, 
what was identified in the EID was the set for the cost overruns that you guys had incurred on that. Uh, for the water distributions, there's some funds that have been allocated there. So as those projects move forward, uh, you will have some funding for those items as well. Um, next, we're going to talk about. Excuse me, sir. Can yes, we interrupt? Sir. We Can have I a interrupt question? you? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, you said that uh, these funds were available now. Uh, we, we have the Central Paris Jail tie-in that we're moving forward with. Uh, the funding for that is available as soon as we uh, identify that. Um, as soon as we, when do we get those funds in order to move forward with that project? Help. Uh, as I appreciated, the funds are available to expend now. You, there was just some, um, we can advise you exactly what process you need to go to to acquire, and we'll be working with uh, Martha on the documentation that will be required to expend those funds. Okay, and we also have the ones with ACUD because that's something that's we've been waiting on for years now, and, and we want to make sure that that's available. And whatever needs to be done, would you please get in touch with Mr. Joseph here so we can transfer that so they can move forward with the project. Yes, sir. We will work. Because our that. next thing on the agenda, we will be forward with bonding and we want to be able to move forward with that project. And mm -hmm. and this fu these funds are an, uh, an integral part of that. Yes, sir. We, we appreciate it. We will work with Mr. Joseph. Okay. Yes, Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next item that we're going to talk about is the uh, comprehensive wastewater treatment system. Um, our pre-Katrina estimate was roughly $122 million. As you all are aware, uh, cost have increased roughly 30 percent. So the overall treatment plant, uh, treatment system cost is roughly 158 million. Um, what we've done is we've actually identified several components of this treatment system. Uh, one is a regional wastewater treatment plant. Uh, its design capacity right now is roughly uh, 10 MGD uh, average flow, and we're using the SBR. Uh, system, and then we're going to also employ some regional collection systems, and there's some stag grant funding that will be utilized, and some uh, block grant money. So the current planning estimate that we're working with is roughly 158 million. Um, Manish will get into some details on some mechanisms to fund this. Uh, that's what the business plan is focusing in on. Just to talk about phase one, we've actually broken up the comprehensive wastewater treatment system into three phases. Phase one focuses in on the regional wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the design is currently 95 percent complete. We're addressing some comments from that. Uh, that should be nearing 100 percent completion over the next couple months. Uh, this estimated construction cost is roughly 12 million. Um, this collection system will get us up to about a million and a half of flow to the wastewater treatment plant. I'm sorry. The, collect, the Grand Godin collection system will provide uh, about 1.5 MGD flow to the wastewater treatment plant with roughly 20 percent design. Um, that should be completed sometime this month, and the projected cost for that is roughly $12 million. And then the affluent force main, uh, this is a 30-inch force main discharge into the Mississippi River, and its estimated construction cost right now is roughly $3 million. And these are the items that are necessary to implement phase one of the wastewater treatment system. And again, the business plan will, out, will outlay the funding portion of that. Um, the next phase, uh, phase two and three, there will be implementation of some additional collection systems. Uh, the estimated cost for those systems right now is roughly $22 billion. And what we'll do is for the wastewater treatment plant, we'll increase the capacity to 3.5 million gallons per day. And we will just be implementing, we will make some minor mechanical adjustments to the existing 1.5 uh, on the previous slide that we discussed. We'll make some minor adjustments to the wastewater treatment plant to get us up to three and a half uh, million gallons per day of average flow. And then ultimately we'll roll into phase three and there's some collection systems there and we'll get to our ultimate capacity and the estimated cost at this time is 19 million and that's subject to change. Um, Manish Murda with Hartman Engineers is going to roll us into the uh, overview of the business plan. Manish. Good evening, uh, Chairman and the committee members. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you to allow us to present uh, this business plan. Uh, let me go back and uh, just 
stress a little bit more about what uh, Mr. Algie said uh, on the fancy and the grant. Uh, this is a long, ongoing project, as you are aware of that. And finally, Parish has $2.185 million. Some of that money has already been spent before. So, for example, Darrow projects that has been already funds are all incurred. Uh, we working. We will be working with Martha, and f after a few paperworks, we complete those paperwork. Part of that, 55 percent of that funds could automatically directly transfer into uh, parish within a uh, sh very short duration. So this is a very you know very big steps for it. Some of the projects have already been funded, as you mentioned. Some of the projects you're waiting to move forward. So it's a uh, I just want to kind of stress that it's a very important step. Uh, let me lead, lead up to uh, what we've been tasked to do is come up with a business plan, a long-term business plan that allows you to see where we are right now and where we're moving forward. Uh, there are four elements of that in any kind of plan. First, what, what is our objective? What are we trying to do? Second thing is how much is going to cost uh, dollar-wise? Third thing is, what is the timeline? How these projects going to incur? And the most important part is, how are we going to get all the money together? Uh, plan is as good as the funding sources. So what we try to do is put all those four elements together in a one simple, easy to understand process that allows you to see where everything stands as you move forward. Unfortunately, you cannot see it very uh, clearly uh, on this thing. What it is is a road map. Uh, it lays out everything uh, that are part of this ca uh, capital improvement business plan, starting from year 2007 all the way to 2018. Uh, on your right hand side, bottom right hand corner, it identifies all the projects that's been that has been identified in different plans, uh, the master plan that was prepared there. What are the elements of, uh, of these plans from, from planning, engineering, funding, uh, constructions? What are the different source of uh, the funding is available? So what we have done is that we looked at each year, uh, we listed those projects, we came up with the construction cost of those projects, we have listed the timeline, and we have listed where those funds are going to come from. So as we finish the business plan, you're going to have what we call is a cookbook or roadmap that lists every source of grants that is available, what are the process that you have to take it, what forms you need to fill out, when those forms need to fill out. Uh, it ranges from stag grant, the course section 219 funding, the USDA funding, the uh, low interest state revolving loan funds uh, and various sources that's going to make sure that you will be able to implement this plan. Now it looks $150 million is a lot of large sums of money, but if you properly plan it and divide it over the long period of time that matches what the parish's growth is, uh, we will be able to handle it. And this plan actually very clearly describe all the steps that needs to be taken. So as I said, the goal objective is to allow the parish to move forward with the infrastructure program. Uh, this is very critical and vital steps that parish has to take it sooner than later. Uh, so what we have done is to match the proposed project with the optimum funding sources and appropriate grant funding available for various projects. So it's not simply that uh, you have $150 million and you got to go ahead and do that. What this business plan lists is that first year you need $3 million, second year you need $8 million, third year you need. So before you need the funding, you are preparing yourself to fill those grant applications, uh, uh, looking for getting the federal funding, working with core and all those things that are listed in the business plan. Uh, so it's a road map, as I said. It's a guide and road map that needed uh, to implement the long-term capital improvement projects. And uh, 
is to be used in preparation of grant application to state and federal agency. A lot of time, there's a lot of different grants available uh, all over places and all things. But when you have all the information that needed to fill those grants in a quickly basis, uh, you're always in line to get those funding. So as we said, uh, capital improvement uh, business plan has timeline, schedules, budget, and funding plan to match capital improvement proje project with a variety of funding sources. Uh, infrastructure projects include those projects that already are in your stack grant project, the community block grant uh, sewer projects, uh, project plan under uh, 219 program. Uh, so it's a living document, you know. It's, it's going to be change updated as the need and requirement and cost changes, but basically you're allowed to keep everything ahead of it. You know, what are the projects we need to work on it, how much is gonna cost, where the money is gonna come from. This is just the kind of one of the example that we have listed uh, as a part of this uh, business plan. On the column, you list all these projects, project one, two, three, four, and that's keyed it to a road map. It describes what the project is, uh, it, and it describes all the funding sources. Now, as we move forward, those funding sources are going to be refined. Uh, some of the project description is refined. But this is how we're going to pursue that, uh, where all the money is going to come from. This shows the timeline, you know, where the design and construction, for example, if you have a treatment plan in three phases, uh, it kind of line up a design of phase one, construction, uh, of, of phase one, and as you finishing construction, your phase one project, you're beginning and designing. So it's kind of give you exact idea when the project's gonna begin, when the project's gonna end. Uh, so this is a schedule it's listed for all the projects for next 12 years. Uh, this is just the example of of source of different fund, we listed all the projects. Uh, on the first column, you see the funding sources, uh, the second column project descriptions, what is the status of the end of the year? Just that, you know, asking you questions, where we stand on these projects? And this is kind of give you update of this thing. So what we are uh, like to uh, path forward in 2007, what we would like to suggest the request the committee is to parish to adopt this comprehensive water wastewater plan. Uh, and capital improvement business plan as a guiding documents for implementation of uh, long-term ascension parish water and wastewater infrastructure program. This will allow you to move forward. This will allow you to set the goals, consistent goal where everybody, administration, committee, council, is on the same page exactly where you're heading to. Uh, we have requested some of the things that we are working on with, with administration. We have requested the extension of our grant, uh, the current grant, the stack, we're working on it. As you know that uh, it's been a long time and, and we want to make sure that we have enough time to expand all the funds. Uh, we're going to complete the Darrow reimbursement request so Parish can get their 55 percent share, which is about $250,000 that they already spent will come back to the Parish uh, what we like to do inventory of all the septic system a non-public uh, package plan to begin uh, looking at acquisition and tie-in and comprehensive wastewater treatment plan. Ultimately, all of these septic tank systems will be replaced by lift stations to a regionalized lift stations where it goes to a seven and a half million gallon average plant and then discharge it to a river. And that's the ultimate goal. Uh, as we said, that we're going to continue to assist Ascension Parish to uh, get stag grant, uh, get the money start flowing in, because that's the key. You know, m most important thing, planning is good, but how much parish is going to get it? And this is the steps that we're going to continue to take it. Next 12 months uh, into 2008, uh, we have to begin LDEQ loan application process for phase one construction. Uh, Adopt parish ordinance for acceptance of new subdivision wastewater system. Core continue to assist parish uh, department public works, and core assistance to a grant office for USDA. Uh, this this all of those things are possible. With core is is kind of proactive about this plan, uh, putting everything together, educating uh, 
the committee and administration parish. So at the end, I would I would request the uh, committee member to look at this plan. Uh, what we are, as Falcom has mentioned, we have informally talked to administration last week. Uh, this Thursday, we're going to present to Finance Committee the same plan, and we're planning to bring it to a council first week of June for 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 adoption. So, this is where I end. And if you have any question, answer me, Roland, uh, Falcom, or LG. You're welcome to answer you. One thing I'd like to stress uh, in our presentation is that. Uh, we will start working with Martha next week to start getting your reimbursements back on your stag grant, particularly for the Darrell. Uh, so that funding uh, will be coming available. Uh, it will be available to be used for other projects that you may have in mind. Uh, that's going to be a reimbursement. Uh, also, uh, as you move forward on some of the other projects, we will certainly be working with your grant people uh, to make sure that we, that we can get the money back. Uh, from EPA. Our goal is to have all this money spent within the next 12 months. Uh, this grant has been around since 1998, and uh, once we get it spent, then we can start applying for additional stack grants with EPA. So that's going to be a focus for us over the next several months. Mr. Shea Snyder, discussion? Yes. Mr. Falcon. Mr. Hall. Uh, we appreciate your presentation, um, and as you said, the monies were appropriated in or were uh, initi initiated in 1998 stag grants, and 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 we're basically just re receiving them and dispersing them now. What what has changed, and what uh, to give us a little more of a fuzzy feeling about being able to get monies now? Because it just seems like getting monies from the federal government at this point in time, uh, stag grants and et cetera, people have not been encouraging us too much about the chances of getting stag grants to continue this program. The business plan looks great, that's fine. But the real the realistic opportunity to file for stag grants and getting them in a timely manner to move forward, I mean it's been nine years now since the last ones were received before we actually got the money. What's going to change now that we're going to follow through with this plan and be able to do that? Well, the, initially uh, there was some level of difficulty with coming to a consensus on the STAG grant. And basically what we had got from EPA was that until you implement this particular grant, we will not give you another one, basically. Okay. So now that we've got the EID approved, uh, like we said, we have a goal, we'll get the money spent within the next 12 months. The door is now going to be open for us to apply for more grants. Uh, What's the timeline on that normally? Well, I think uh, within the next the budget, next budget cycle starting in October, and we're going to be working with the grants program uh, to uh, get some applications in uh, this calendar year. Uh, we've got a very good relationship now with EPA. They understand where we're going. Uh, we got the approvals necessary, so when they start seeing some reimbursement, I think we're probably going to be back in their good graces. Okay. Any other discussion, Mr. Savon? Yeah, I do. Did I understand you to say that we need three million dollars to get started, to to get the project started? I, I just just giving you an example as you look go back to a map on 2007, uh, the project we have identified. I believe it's a three million dollar. I think for the first phase, the first phase we estimated at around twenty million dollars. Uh, the first phase that's going to be the wastewater treatment plant with the uh, the uh, outfall to the river plus the first uh, part of Correct. the collection system. Uh, it's about twenty million dollars expenditure. Right. And we uh, have identified. We will identify what the funding sources should be uh, for that particular project uh, and whether or not there would be any additional funds that would may be required uh, by the parish. Right now we're suggesting that the bulk of the money probably needs to come from low interest loan from uh, DEQ, uh, the EPA. Uh, we've made some preliminary conversations with them already uh, so the opportunities look 
well uh, that we can move in that direction. Uh, so what we've done, we'll base that uh, estimate on trying to keep the user fees around $40 per household. That's very important. Right, and I'm just trying to figure out because with the with the direction that we're going now, the, the, the 2.2 million that we've been having for years is pretty much allocated uh, for ACUD water improvement system, the jail, the sewer jail, and the uh, overrun on Darrell sewer system and even Hillaryville. So pretty much that grant is, is spent, so to speak. The one that we've been sitting on is finally spent and uh, with approval. That goes back to my next question. Martha, you may be able to answer this. As far as the, uh, uh, what is it? The what is it that we had to get approved by uh, the E, the, the EI? EID. EID. All right. You said that it's been approved and it's sitting at the administration's office. It just approved last week. We got the letter. Administration got the letter. So what we call is, you know, typically federal government want to go through the, what the environmental clearance process. You cannot get to the point unless you identify those projects. So though that process is done, public meeting, public notice, all is done. Parish now can A, apply for reimbursement, uh, and B, continue to spend money on their construction project. As they spend money, they send the reimbursement request, EPA will pay 55% of it. Okay, and my question was, there's no more that we need to do on our end to start spending the money. Except we just filling, need the, to grant, spend it. filling okay. the grant forms, and all okay. which is a very simple process, but you know, that's all the right. step that you have to go through it. Another question is you cleared up as far as us making decisions to move forward the jailhouse expansion and the sewer tie-in. Uh, the, the question was we wasn't sure or we were told by administration that we wasn't sure if we were going to be able to use the stag money, the $500,000 from the stag on that project, but you're telling us that it's clear to go. Yes. Good. That, that's yes, good sir. news. Everything is, I mean, it was almost like a, you know, perfect timing, you know, uh, just we want to sit there and we were we were all excited about getting the letter, but everything is is go uh, money great. is there. Yeah, I mean, that, that's great news to us. Yes. And I just want to make sure that I'm clear, and we're clearing it up that we can move forward on those because there's other decisions having to be made. Now and, that's and, and I just have to uh, allow me to say that a lot of time, you know, in federal government, I guess Falcom has a special relation with the Gene Wasserman EPA and all these things, and with several trips to Dallas, kind of facilitate these approvals uh, so it was it was a difficult process but we have the paper in our hand I mean there is no more promises so we can go forward with that. okay um, the the regional waste treatment plant it doesn't really need to be known today where it's gonna sit is that correct? Is that a correct statement? Uh, and the reason why is because I, I know there's a, a possibility that it may sit on 30 acres next to Lamar Dixon. That has not been secured to this day. Uh, Lamar Dixon facility itself, is it capable of being our regional no. plant? My, uh, this is Roland Muro with Hartman Engineering. The plant has been preliminary design by uh, GEC to sit on the BASF property uh, and the transfer of the property is a, an issue separate from the design. The current plan at Lamar Dixon doesn't have the capacity uh, and it wasn't feasible to uh, increase that capacity. Retrofit. Yes. Okay. So I'm just wanting to make sure, uh, I'm wanting to know, make sure from the core that it's okay if we move the plant no. from the 30 acres to some other site. Uh, or is that going to throw a kink in our ability to continue with the STAG grants? Well, the uh, regional plant is separate from the STAG grant, so you okay with the STAG grant. The regional plant will be funds will, will be another source of funds for the large plant. Okay, now 
our understanding is that uh, once we make a, if the council make a full commitment to go forward with constructing the regional plant, then BAS, BASF would transfer the property. Uh, okay. That's the word that we've gotten from some of the meetings we had with them. They're waiting for that full commitment before they transfer the property. Uh, there was also a second uh, plan, uh, the possibility of using some of the share property across the street. I think he has a, some type of firing range over there. If, in fact, uh, we could not get the BASF site. But I think uh, our first move need to do is to show the commitment that we're serious about building the facility and then continue to work with BASF uh, to get the property transferred. Okay. I just uh, that I want that cleared up. Anything else? Yes, Mr. Hang, on, hang on just a second. <laughs> Let's talk about the funding. You, you, you got a list of uh, funding avenues that we can go down and try to get. Sure. Are all of these that's listed, are they, can they be intermingled as far as I can go after a stag grant, I can go after this one, and they're not going to say, well, no, you're getting this. I mean, it, so we can go, there's several pots of money that we can go out and, uh, and one won't bug the other one. W very good question. And this is what, what we try to establish a business plan is more realistic, you know, where we have a flexibility built in. So it's not like you're kind of relying on one source right. of funding for everything and all of a sudden stop it. And that's why we say, you know, uh, realistically we can get, say, a million dollars or so from a core every year. We can get a million dollars from Stag Grant every year. We can get CDBG money, 800000 700000 every year. We can get low interest loan that somewhat augment whatever the remaining thing is that. Uh, we have USDA, Rural, Rural Utility Services, that grant is available. So each grants are independent, that you can pursue it, and one would not impact completely what you're trying to do it. Obviously, that needs to be uh, uh, flexible enough that allows you to move forward. But answer your question is that as we prepare a plan, on every year we have a different source of funding put together, make up for the total project for that year. Okay. To add to what he says, is that also we understand the limitations of each program. You're right that you can't match certain programs together, but by knowing how the different programs work, we will be able to synchronize uh, the projects, uh, pick out separate elements of projects, uh, so we won't have that problem in terms of whether or not we can use funds on one project or matching with a pro on the other. We will work that out as we go through the business plan. Okay. Um, in your summary, uh, path forward, you say inventory and assessment of existing non-public package plants for acquisition and tie-ins to the comprehensive wastewater plant. Are we going to be able to, or would we be able to use the stag grant money to buy existing private package plants? Or, or, you know, uh, are we limited to wh where the money's going to have to be spent? Now, if you don't know that right now, that's fine. You just you well, can get back yeah, to me at the finance I mean, every, meeting. Every funding has a requirement. And like for example, uh, you know, uh, we have to go back and look at and some of those things. I mean, buying private treatment plants uh, using public money and all those things. So we need to look at. You know, we're glad to answer you that question, but okay. I, I don't know. Unless no, we don't know the answer specific to that question right, well, today. Yeah, if you can get it for for the finance meeting or the council meeting whenever you present, that'd be fine. I just that's just something that I want to know. How flexible are we going to be with that? Because uh, that's something that you're asking or recommending that we do is go after right. the package plant. So now we got to come up with some money to buy the package plant. Right. Can we use your money? That's that's all the only question. Right. Right. Uh, how about the history in Falcon? You probably know this more than anyone. What's the history of the Stag Grant if Ascension Parish um, commits with a good solid plan, a good solid business plan as far as and getting the, the, the infrastructure taken care of on a timely basis and where we can resubmit to the Corps uh, to, for Stag? What kind of monies 
can we anticipate? Can we anticipate more than a million, like two or three million, if, if we get the ball really rolling? That, I mean, that's what I was told years ago. Is that really, does that really hold true today? So that we'll have a, a feel? The, absolutely. It's a very good question. I mean, obviously, the money that goes into a stack grant is, uh, you know, from the con the congressional delegations, you know, has to lobby for funding. I mean, there is a, it's a very common that we can get two, three, four, five million dollars. But it all, all depends upon how well we prepare for that, how early we are requesting all the things, how, how, how we lobbying our congressmen. Ultimately, they're the one who's going to be putting on different bills, things like that. It, but it is very likely, especially a growing uh, community like Ascension Parish, uh, where they have a tremendous amount of need. And if that need is established, uh, you know, a stack could open uh, a big door. I mean, it could become a big part. I mean, there is no guarantee. It's a highly competitive grants. Everybody applies for it. But uh, we have seen it, especially with my experience, I mean, uh, where we were able to get every year, uh, you know, million, two million dollar grant. And those things add up really fast when you start getting every year that money. And they understand that as EPA doesn't want to fund a program partly. So if once they commit to it, they're kind of more married to making sure that program goes from A to Z. Yeah, they take a little ownership of it? Yes. Okay. Uh, one other thing, Mr. Chairman, and then I'll yield the floor back to you. The key component here is the parish having the ability or finding the ability to come up with some of our own money because the stag is matching money and a lot of the, the avenues out there are matching monies or a low interest where we have to pay. Uh, you, you've got here adopt pair shortness for acceptance of new subdivision wastewater system and that's where we come in. We have to look at this very uh, strongly and make a decision quickly so that if we do elect to move forward on adopting or uh, accepting the new voice water we can get it in so we can start getting the revenues from the new because that's the revenue source that we can start getting to go after and the matching money because truthfully we've done polls in the past everybody in Ascension Parish wants sewer they want their sewer out of their front ditch but if you ask them if they want to pay for it they say no so as far as going to the people and asking for a vote or for a tax don't know if that's doable or not. This is doable. This is one avenue that we can take to generate some monies and to go to Congress and try to get some monies some el elsewhere. So that's an important piece of this puzzle here that we need to act on pretty quick. With that, Mr. Chairman, you can have it. Mr. Joseph, would you like to come up? You uh, sign a speaker card. This, we have uh, Councilman Joseph from uh, District 1. Thank you, Chairman. I just got a quick question. I know you see that road map plan, and I like that plan. I mean, it shows us we'll be going into the future, and we definitely need that throughout the parish. My only question is item one is for a water source. Item two is for the jail on the west side. And item 16 is a, a block grant. After that, the west side is not in this plan. And I think we do need that comprehensive plan on the west side, too. So I just wish we would put something in the plane for the west side on the rest of the out, out uh, city limits of Donsonville. You know, so I just wish the council and everyone else look at that a little bit closely on that. Okay? Thank you. Any other discussions, questions? Of, uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah, I have yes, one sir, from Mr. Lambert. Mr. Falcon. Uh, it's going to be many years before some parts of the parish here will get uh, wastewater. In the meantime, some of the, uh, how much money will we have left over before Miss, uh, we looking into some more grants? Or Miss Martha, uh, nothing. What, what I'm getting at, I'm, I'm trying to, we need, we need to, you know, you know, our waterways and stuff, we need some type of illustration you know, until we get, you know, the sewage, you know, out of the ditches. I think uh, our plan is to aggressively pursue these programs uh, once we get this plan adopted. Uh, we will be assisting the parish, and like we said, and getting your reimbursements on the existing grant, uh, but also I think they've identified some other grants uh, that we also will be assisting them and moving forward with. 
certainly we will be putting money in our budget uh, to continue our relationship with the parish. Uh, we talked about uh, one of the things we would like to do this year is to uh, put in an application uh, to DEQ for a low interest loan to get the, uh, the large treatment plant under construction maybe by 2008. Uh, so uh, I think once we get this adopted by the council, I think all the wheels are going to be in motion to search out all funding sources uh, that we can find to, to make this make this plan work. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, I have a few hot spots that I'd like to get some attention on real quick, but uh, thank you. We, we thank you all very much, and we look forward to seeing you all again for the finance meeting Thursday. Appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Number six, resolution approving the issuance, sale, and delivery of not delivery of not exceeding $7 million of revenue bonds, series 2007 of Ascension Consolidated Utilities District Number 1, State of Louisiana. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Shake Snyder. Uh, this is something uh, on the West Bank and the rural areas outside of the, the town of Donaldsonville. Uh, a 10 mil property tax has been passed uh, for a comprehensive uh, water system uh, on the West Bank and this has already been uh, passed. Uh, they, a bonding agent has determined that it's going to be a little less than seven million dollars to bond out to uh, complete this water system and uh, all of this, all this is is a resolution uh, approving the issues of, the, of this bond so we can uh, request that from the full council and I'd like to do that in the form of a motion. Moved by Mr. Shakespeare. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Salvoy. Discussion? Discussion. Mr. Salvoy. Mr. Shakespeare, can you please have the appropriate consultants at the finance meeting to go over the $7 million as far as the business plan? I would like to see and, and feel comfortable that we can bond the seven million dollars and still operate and i'm sure we can but i would i'd like to have it in hand okay okay i don't expect the bond that's going to be we'll present it thursday tonight, but i need to we need to hear from them before the count full council takes consideration of it. oliver can we can get everyone there thursday at the at the okay Ms. Finance Sandman, meeting. can you make sure that's that's on finance agenda any further discussion yeah, just one. Mr. Joseph? Yes. This bond already has been approved by the state already. And because of that, that's why we have to come to the parish for the approval on it. I thought that was in your package. They did send a package to the parish. I thought y'all would have had it. Well, if they can get it to me prior to, that'd be fine. But I'd, I would like to see a no breakdown problem, on the monies on that. Okay. I'd, I'd like to see them also at the finance, just present it for the full council. Uh, before we go to number seven, uh, there will be a five-minute break before transportation. Number seven. Motion adjourned. Motion by Mr. Lambert, second by Mr. Sidewalk. Meeting adjourned.